friends let us today uh, see some good questions about your engineering mechanics which is a very very important syllabus from the point of view of your assistant motor vehicle inspector appsc and tspsc amva examination right so let us see uh, first question two non collinear parallel equal forces acting in opposite direction constitute so definitely they are parallel and equal so definitely and they are non collinear so definitely they are going to constitute what is known as couple from our fundamentals so that is the answer let us mark it next question forces are called coplanar when all of them acting on a bo on body lie in so the name itself suggests that coplanar means in the same plane or one plane so the answer is one plane that is b that is forces are called coplanar when all of them acting on body lie in one plane that is your answer next question varignan theorem of moments states that if a number of coplanar forces acting on particle are in equilibrium so then definitely so neither of a b c are correct but d is the correct answer so let us see what is that that means this is not correct their algebraic sum is zero it cannot be uh, their uh, lines of action are uh, uh, are at equal distances this is also not correct then the algebraic sum of their moments about any point in their plane is zero no actually this uh, varignan theorem is going to talk about the moments of the resultant and the constituting forces so definitely uh, the result of the um, the moment of the resultant about a point in the plane of the forces should be equal to uh, the sum of the algebraic sum of the moments of the individual forces about the same point so the answer is the algebraic sum of the uh, algebraic sum of the their moments that means the forces moments about any point is equal to the moment of their resultant force about the same point that is the correct answer so your answer is d next question so here the question is the resultant of two forces p and q uh, such that p is greater than q acting alone um, the same straight line acting along the same straight line but in opposite direction so here it is given that p is greater than q but they are uh, working or they are acting in opposite direction so what is the resultant it should be p minus q because p is greater than q if q is greater than p it should be q minus p but because they are acting in a different direction opposite direction if they are in the same direction it is p plus q so p plus q or q plus q doesn't matter but p minus q and q minus b definitely matter because here p is greater than q it should be p minus q that is answer that is answer so your answer is b next question two forces are acting at an angle of 120 degrees the bigger force the bigger force is 40 newtons and the resultant is perpendicular to the smaller force the smaller force is so if please draw a diagram so indicating that your bigger force let us say p is the smaller force and q is the bigger force so he has given that uh, the angle between p and q is equal to 120 degrees right so draw a perpendicular there okay okay so definitely so uh, if you on the left side so draw the x-axis positive x-axis uh, negative x-axis and also positive y-axis and also uh, negative y-axis right so here the angle between the q and the negative y-axis should be equal to 60 right so that should be balanced by the uh, p which is that is small force which is acting in the right direction so that means p should be equal to q cos 60 here q is let us say q is equal to bigger force equal to 40 so 40 cos 60 is equal to p that means 40 into 1 by 2 that means 20 newtons so p is equal to or your smaller force is equal to 40 into 1 by 2 that is 20 newtons your answer is a next question if a number of forces are acting at a point the resultant is given by so we know that so here uh, sigma v is the algebraic sum of the vertical components and sigma h is the uh, algebraic sum of the horizontal components so definitely we have seen from the fundamentals we know from the fundamentals that the resultant of uh, the forces the component forces uh, should be equal to the uh, square root of uh, sigma v square plus sigma h square that means the resultant is equal to under root of the algebraic sum of horizontal components whole squared plus uh, the uh, algebraic sum of uh, vertical components whole squared 
so you this 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 you have to take undertake so under root that means the answer that is the answer so that means b is the correct answer so if a number of forces are acting at a point the resultant is given by under root of sigma v whole square plus sigma h whole square where sigma h and sigma v are the algebraic sum of the horizontal components and algebraic sum of the vertical components respectively that is your answer your answer is b the system of forces is equal to two mutual perpendicular uh, forces namely sigma x and sigma y then the inclination of resultant with x axis theta is given by we know that it is equal to so definitely it is equal to sigma y by sigma x so what is sigma x the algebraic sum of the horizontal components and uh, what is sigma y horizontal sum of the horizontal uh, algebraic sum of the vertical components so theta is given by tan inverse of uh, sigma y by sigma x or tan, conversely tan theta is equal to sigma y by sigma x so the angle uh, made by the resultant uh, r with the x axis theta is given by uh, tan inverse of sigma x by sigma y that is answer so your answer is uh, your d next question so here uh, the angle between two forces when the resultant is maximum and minimum respectively are so definitely the angle um, between the so the maximum force is given by when the, act, the when the forces are collinear and uh, um, the minimum force is given when the forces are in the opposite direction that means when the angle between them is 180 uh, degrees that means so maximum and minimum we will get when the angle between the forces are 0 and 180 degrees respectively that means your answer is your a next question boys two uh, parallel forces are acting at a distance of 24 mm apart and uh, their resultant is 20 newtons if the line of action of the resultant is 6 mm from any given force the two forces are uh, so draw a figure uh, denoting um, your uh, two uh, arrows uh, the distance between them is uh, 24 mm okay so because uh, the resultant he is saying that any force the distance between the other force is 6 mm so the total distance is 24 mm so that uh, the distance between the other force is 18 mm and the below force is let us say above force is 18 mm and below force is uh, 6 mm the total is uh, draw a two horizontal lines uh, denoting the two forces which are acting in the same direction and uh, the top force uh, is acting at a distance of uh, 18 mm and the bottom force is acting at a distance of 6 mm from the center line which is your let us say resultant okay so definitely the moment of uh, top force the let us say it is p and the moment of bottom force let us say the bottom force is equal to q so p into 18 should be equal to q into 6 that means uh, it gives me q is equal to 3p but you know that p plus q is equal to uh, what is the total sum it is equal to 20 newtons so p plus q is equal to 20 and uh, q is equal to 3p substitute them so substituting q is equal to 3p so 3p plus p is equal to 20 newtons and p is equal to uh, 4 that means 4p is equal to 20 newtons and p is equal to 5 newtons because p plus q is equal to 5, 20 newtons as i got p is equal to 5 newtons q should be equal to 20 minus 5 that is 15 newtons so the forces are p and q are 50 newtons and uh, 5 newtons respectively right a small block of weight uh, q 44.5 newtons is placed on an inclined plane which makes an angle alpha is equal to 30 degrees with the horizontal the components of weight q parallel and perpendicular to the inclined plane are so you know that the, the when any body is lying on a plane which is um, uh, on a plane which is making an angle of alpha with the horizontal or your ground level so the component along the plane should be equal to w sin alpha and the component perpendicular to the inclined plane should be equal to w cos alpha so substituting w sin alpha and w cos alpha where alpha is equal to 20 uh, sorry alpha is equal to uh, 30 degrees i will get uh, the component acting along the inclined plane is equal to w sin alpha that is equal to uh, 44.5 into sin 30 that is 1 by 2 so that means 22.25 newtons i will get q is equal to w cos alpha that is uh, 30 into cos of 30 degrees that means uh, cos 30 is equal to root 3 by 2 that is uh, 0 0.7 um, 7, 7, 3, root 3 what is the value of root 3 so you can root 3 by 2 so you can get 0 0.766 something like that okay so 30 into 0 0.766 okay sorry uh, 44.5 into uh, 0 0.766 that gives me 38.54 newtons so 30 into uh, sorry 44.5 into sin 30 and 44 44.5 into cos 30 those are the answers 
that means the component of the forces okay acting uh, uh, the component of the weight acting along the um, parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the inclined plane are 22.25 newtons and uh, 38.54 newtons so that means your b is the correct option so here b is the correct option Okay, boys. So what we have done, we have actually solved some important good questions from your engineering mechanics, which is very very useful for your examination, uh, your AMA. So this is a very very important uh, topic. You can say you can expect at least basics only because it is a diploma level examination. You can expect only basics level only, see, but your fundamentals should be very clean and neat and perfect and thorough. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have liked my channel, please like, subscribe, comment, and share among your groups and contacts. Once again, let us meet in a good video, excellent video. Okay testing our concept uh, excellently or deeply okay once again all the best and good luck